You know, there's a big difference in core values. I believe in the Declaration of Independence. I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the Federalist Papers. Obama believes in the writings of Saul Alinsky and in the ideas of a European socialist bureaucratic system. It's that far apart. And let me be quite clear. I'm prepared to defend American exceptionalism. When he was asking Europe, what do you think about American exceptionalism? He said, well, you know, the British probably think they're exceptional and the Greeks probably think they're exceptional. He didn't have a clue. American exceptionalism derives from the Declaration of Independence, which says we hold these truths to be self-evident. Very important concept, that there's truth in what we stand for. Not ideology, not philosophy, but an effort by the Founding Fathers to get to the very heart of what governs human beings. That all men are created equal. And remember, this was a very radical idea. Because in 1776, we were in a world of kings and czars and emperors. And here were these Americans saying, no, we're all created equal. The rule of law is for all of us. And then it says, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. Now, this is the heart of American exceptionalism. We are the only society in history that says power comes from God to each one of you personally. You are personally sovereign. You loan power to the state. The state never loans power to you. That's why the Constitution begins. We, the people, of the United States of America. It doesn't say we the politicians, we the lawyers, we the bureaucrats. It says we the people. Because in America, we define the contract of our government. And that's why when judges start behaving outside the Constitution, they're a threat to the very fabric of American society because they're violating that contract. It goes on to say, the rights are unalienable. That means no politician, no judge, no bureaucrat can come between you and God. And that's something we're going to have to have a big discussion about in Washington. And then it says, the rights among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Very important concept. Notice. First of all, happiness in the 18th century meant wisdom and virtue, not hedonism and acquisition. And the Founding Fathers thought that a wise people could remain free, but a foolish people would end up in a dictatorship. But notice what it guarantees. It doesn't guarantee happiness. It guarantees the right to pursue an active concept. So there's no provision for a federal department of happiness. There's no suggestion that we should have hap happiness stamps for the under-happy. <laughs> and if you had said to the Founding Fathers that someday we'd have a president who'd say that he was going to take from the overly happy and redistribute to the underly happy, <laughs> they would have said, what kind of arrogance would lead somebody to be so ignorant that they believe they have the wisdom to decide which American to take something from and which American to give something to, and it would have violated the very core concept of being an American. <laughs>